So we'll continue our discussion, and that's a facilitation on uh, Ken 103. We started and we see the course is introduction to physical chemistry. Today's uh, facilitation, we'll take, we'll review some instruments needed for chemical analysis. We've taken some instruments. We're gonna look at principles, methods, and applications of separation, separation techniques. We'll look at the different principles. For instance, when you are carrying out you find out that the mixture, the different component of the mixture must have different boiling points. So we'll look at that principle. And when we get out of here, yeah, when we finish this, uh, we will be able to look at uh, kinetic theory of gases. We'll look at parameters such as mean square speed and the root mean square speed. For the gas pressure, what are the expression for the gas pressure? We will derive equation for translational kinetic energy of gases. Theory of uh, gases to try to solve the problem arising from kinetic theory of gases. So now let's start, and um, we are looking at some instruments. So now let's look at chemical parameters. There are many types of chemical instruments. The simple instrument like a thermometer, barometer, are uh, all instrument. But there's another one we call analytical. Whole instrument will take you to something like uh, maybe a simple analytical instrument can be something like uh, a pH meter, uh, electrochemical apparatus, chromatography, and any other one, NMR, and the rest of them. So like we have melting point tube. When we are coming for practicals, you see, you will certainly, we have Abuja and Lagos Center, they are melting point apparatus. So that one is actually used to measure the melting point of a compound. So we have analytical balance. There are two types of balance and we are in, it's called top loading balance. And the other one is called analytical balance. The difference is in based on what you call sensitivity. The most sensitive one is the analytical balance. And why is it sensitive? That means if you have fraction, maybe 0, 0.00 up to four decimal places, some up to the least of them, up to three decimal places can measure. So if it can measure higher number of decimal places, it's called analytical balance. But if you can just measure maybe one decimal place or maximum two decimal places, then it is called. Uh, so the top loading balance measure one or two, at most two decimal places. Analytical balance should be able to measure at least four decimal places. So we have some instrument we use for titration, and that is, uh, you know, the buret, you know, that instrument. That's a, uh, we can have a conduction, a geometric titration. We have different types of titration. Conduction metric titration, that means we need to have a conductivity meter. We have a pH meter. And we have many different types of titration, but you know the commonest uh, uh, titration at this level is pipette, the burette, the beaker, the conical flask, the measuring cylinder, and then volumetric flask. That's uh, what you require. This instrument, thermometer, what do we use thermometer for? What do we use thermometer for? So temperature is actually the measure of degree of hotness or coldness of a body. So uh, we so thermometer measure the degree. the Beckman thermometer determination of freezing point. It can measure freezing point. That is Beckman thermometer. Beckman thermometer. So freezing means that uh, something is changing from liquid to ice. For instance, from uh, what so example is a uh, water changing to ice. So that is uh, an example. So another one is a pH acid or base. That's the strength of acid or base is explained in terms of the pH of the solution. When you look at an acid, is it, is it basic or is it neutral solution? That would depend on pH. And seven, it is called said to be acidic. And when it is, uh -huh. 
Putin. Hey, that noise is not allowed. Please be my child. Mute yourself. Don't allow me to mute you. We will have a pH meter for measuring the strength of the solution. So we have electrochemical cells. It will also measure the voltage. And we have the barometer for measuring the... There's, we have what we call Oswald viscometer for measuring. Then we have rheometer. It's still for measuring. No, this one will not be enough. It's still for work. It's a stupid student there. Let me see if I can. I don't like much. Along the way, you can have questions. Yeah. Yeah. I have to mute everybody. So we have a Oswald viscometer for measurement of for measurement of uh, viscosity. So measuring pressure is what barometer. The instrument for measuring voltage is what the instrument for measuring relative viscosity is what instrument is not necessary. Burette, pipette, conical flask, pH meter, and of course, I think all of them may be needed. Depends. In let me use. In sim in a simple dichrometric uh, analysis, so the strength of an acid or a base can be determined. pH meter, barometer, voltmeter. You know, is a pH meter that is used for the measurement of. Oil. So you can have a measuring cylinder. Measuring cylinder is used for measuring volume. So now let's look at another one other question that can also refresh your memory. The best instrument for measuring 0 0.0002 grams of a salt is. So you have analytical balance because the number of decimal places is higher. So what, what is the major difference, the major difference between analytical and top loading balance? What's the major difference between analytical and top loading balance? What's the major difference between analytical and top loading balance? Pure substances. That we want something that is pure from pure. A pure substance is a homogeneous material that when it contains only one substance is pure. And that means, for instance, when water, if anything is dissolved in there, it's no longer pure. Impure substances contain impurities. It may be or it may be heterogeneous. So, so, really need. So, what you don't really need is impurity. It doesn't matter. Maybe your is present in water and you need water. That sugar is now impurity because you didn't need sugar. Anyone you don't need is now called impurity. impurity. So, it's the one you don't need that is called impurity. The one that you need. So, so that is the impure. Then only one component, and the what is the aim of separation? The aim is to remove want to remove impurity from a mixture or a separation. So that's the aim of a separation. So principle in separation. So relative solubility of the solid in solvent. That, yeah. If you have a mixture of oil and water, 
you can separate them using a separated for a separation. The oil will be on top while the water is on top. You can get the lighter one and then get the oil later. So separation funnel. So deep, that is why you use a separation funnel. So the absorption stick, absorption. And the particle that sticks to the surface is called absorbent. And then the surface that absorbent, mostly application applicable in chromatography. We have spoken of some mixability. They are not mixable. But when you come to chromatography, the important principle is the absorption. Crystal or non-crystal. You can have gas, solid, liquid. Uh, we have organic or inorganic nature of the constituents. It also depends on that. How we can use whether we can use crystallograph, uh, crystallography recommended. Activity of the mixture is the mixture reactive. So effect of temperature, melting, sublimation, and distillation, fractional distillation. You look at different differently. Now, difference in boiling point is a opting fractional distillation. Difference in boiling fractional distillation. That is the principle for use of crystal method. That's the ability of the, them to form a crystal. So, uh, of what chromatographic method. That is the principle in the application. Of Operating the thing out of it, that could be you are eating, you are look, looking at evaporation. That means you are trying to make liquid to escape. The liquid is not needed, and the liquid will escape. So that is evaporation. And that method, what you call boiling point, because it will, at the boiling point, it will say, see that in the separation of a mixture of ethanol and water is dash. Ethanol and water. Ethanol boils at 78 degrees Celsius, while water boils at 100. Heat the the container containing both mixture. Ethanol water remain. So immiscibility or solubility is the basic principle in the separation of mixture. That is why you use the separation formula. So now operation most suitable when compound with low boiling point that the, the ethanol will be evaporated out while the water different substances in a mixture having different boiling point example crude we have petroleum fraction we have different fraction when you now that have the lowest uh, temperature will come up followed by the one that Crystallization, you have precipitation, you pre precipitating and two soluble salt. There are two salts that are soluble in water, such as silver. They are present in water. You want to remove them. You now begin sodium nitrate. You now begin to be able to have silver nitrate precipitating. Salt, but two of them were soluble, but you want you are removing them by precipitating them out. Techniques based on the flow of materials between the now the materials you want to separate will now be forced to move to pass through a stationary stage, a stationary phase, and the mobile phase is the one that will... and the stream is uh, water is moving in a pipe, so you to where you should go. So that is a mobile phase. Then they will now meet the stationary and the separation will continue. This is the basic principle of chromatograph the mobile phase. The basic principle is the adsorp adsorption is different from absorption. Sugar is absorb water. When you put sugar in water, it absorbs. But it it will not be dissolved. 
So that means it's a different process. Cause, uh, okay, precipitation. I've said that when you have two given solvent, you can precipitate one another. Precipitation reaction is reduction of two solvents. Example is silver chloride. Silver nitrate is soluble in water, and therefore, and you can have sodium chloride, which is soluble. The silver nitrate is now insoluble from the solution. Or uh, what your main interest was to have silver chloride and sodium nitrate, they were soluble in solution. From the, solution. the important thing is that you have removed your prefer for the removal it is a method prefer silver ion from a solution is that is simply precipitation precipitation silver and magnesium nitrate and lead night electropositive than lead therefore magnesium can will be easily precipitated from the magnesium nitrate react with ammonium hydroxide solution precipitate discover dissolve in excess ammonium nitrate react with ammonium hydroxide solution this why precipitate does not dissolve in excess ammonium hydroxide at the end of the reaction only late nitrate is present as a precipitate. So that's another example. Magnesium nitrate and silver nitrate. Is it precipitate out of the solution? It dissolves, is more soluble in a water, for instance, than silver nitrate. So you can separate them by precipitation. So So question, describe how you can separate the mixture of magnesium nitrate and precipitation. Describe how you can separate silver chloride and silver nitrate. That is still by precipitation. The major difference between the adsorp adoption of precipitation in the separation of magnesium nitrate and late nitrate is based on see the answer for yourself. So late nitrate react with ammonium hydroxide solution to form white, white precipitate. So this white precipitate does not dissolve in excess of ammonium hydroxide. At the end of the reaction, only late nitrate is formed. So you can look at that. It's based on the solubility. So that you, that's your, what your answer tells you. So of the kinetic molecule, we are now moving to kinetic theory of gases. I want to take you to your secondary school idea Molecular theory can be used to justify the Dalton law of partial pressure. But first of all, what is the Dalton law of partial pressure? The Dalton law of partial pressure tells you that if there are different gases that do not react chemically, that means we have we have three, four, and all of them are mixed together and they do not react to form a new product. So it's telling you that the total pressure exists pressure due to the combination of the different gas will be the sum of the individual gas pressure. Maybe gas A has two, that will be two plus three. And the next one has five, that's two plus three plus five, and so on. Please say. So now, where there is a mixture of gases, they do not react chemically. That is Dalton of kinetic theory say that where there's a mixture of gas, they do not react chemically. Oh, sorry. Pressure exacted by the gas mixture is the sum of the partial pressure exacted by the individual gases to the one that applies. So, can you examine the different kinetic theories and then one after another? So, derive the relationship between vapor pressure and relative molecular mass of a Okay, that's all right. We will look at 
relationship between vapor pressure and relative molecular mass of a gas. So the molecular mass in all of a mass of one molecule of a substance is vapor density is mass of of certain volume of gas or volume. So what we have here is that two times vapor density is the same as relative molecular mass. Vapor density. To calculate the relative molecular mass, you say two times the value of the vapor density. Or you have vapor density, you say that vapor density is equal to relative molecular mass divided by two. So vapor molecular mass. Why the relative molecular mass is two times the so those are two different uh, two different these things. There are two different things you see. Mass of a gas whose vapor density is two units. Density is equal to relative molecular mass. So two times two is now four. Given an element is 16 gram per mole. Calculate the expected vapor density. So the, you know that the relative vapor density. So that means vapor density will be relative molecular mass divided by two, and that will be is uh, that's what we have as eight. That's the answer is eight. If the vapor density of a gas is two point four, is calculate the relative molecular mass of a gas. Force is calculate the relative molecular mass of a gas. The relative molecular mass is two times vapor density, so that will be two times. Calculate the vapor density of a gas whose relative molecular mass is 28 grams per mole. So the answer will be half. Of the efficient in terms of one, density of gases, the relative molecular mass of gases, both statement. And show that the relation and show the relationship between them. What is Graham's law? It's talking about so factors that affect the rate of division of gas is mass of the gas, then density as density of the gas. And when we talk about it, say that the rate of division of gas is proportional mass of that gas. So kinetic theory, postulate of the gas. Kinetic theory of gases. That's a it's a postulate of is that a gas is composed of a very large number of tiny molecules. Imagining gas as consisting of large number of tiny tiny molecules. Gas you cannot see gas, but you can see it flowing. That means the particles is that very small, far apart from each other. That means the, that molecules are far apart. That's why you can see gas. In the next part, feel the feel the order. That means the gas molecules are far apart. The molecules are far apart from each other. The gas molecules are, con are considered. Sorry, sir, which unit is this? And uh, we are just following the unit from one down down. You say sorry. I can't say which unit I am now, but what happens? I will stop. But you can see some things being introduced to explain to help you explain understand the I I uh, something. Okay, I just joined. So thank you, sir. Okay, sorry, I'm sorry. You when you go to the course page, you will see everything we have done. You, okay, thank you. Able to dial, I, uh, download the PowerPoint. So okay. everything is there in the course page. So let's continue. So the principle of the kinetic choice that consists of molecules. And the molecules are very small, very small, tiny molecules. The gas molecules are far apart from one. Uh, a small earth sphere. The size of the gas molecule is negligible compared to the total volume occupied. Cylinder, you see, it will fill the gas. It's telling you that the gas, the, the size of the gas molecule is very small. When you look at the volume, one is the second puzzle is that gas molecules are confined to a container at rapid random motion. So that means the gas molecule is constantly moving. 
and that move relational motion. They move in all possible directions with different speed. That means gas molecule. Next possible is that all gas consists of tiny particles, called particles, and the molecules are far apart from each other. And the size of the the gas molecule is very small when you compare to the size of the gas molecule are confined to a container and are in a state of constant rapid and random. So now, can you state the first postulate of the kinetic theory and state the assumption that the first law is that gas consists of tiny particles called molecules. The assumption molecules are far apart from each other. That's one. And that the volume the volume occupied by the gas molecule is very small when compared to the volume. Two things we can get from that first law. Possibly, the next possible is gas consists of a very large number of tiny particle cores. You can have is that the gas molecules are far apart from each other. Two, the gas molecules are considered as the size of the gas molecule is negligible compared. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, what's the difference between what's the difference between gas particles and the gas molecules? Gas the same. The particle, you know, when you look at kinetic theory, you say all matter consists uh, the gas molecules. It can be molecules or atom, right? Well, the way we are using here is the same. Hello. Yeah, I'm hearing me. Yes, the concept I'm is the same. In this no, concept, it's the same. But if you are dealing with sodium, the particle may be different. The particle will be atom, right? But when you are dealing with gas, yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted to. Hear. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly what I want. Oh. Thank you. So, so and if you are dealing with charged particles, the uh, charge, uh charged ions. The particle is now what you call ions. So, so the part, the use of the word particle is actually related. So we now look at uh, the third postulate. We have done the second postulate. Let's look at the third, third postulate. During their motion, they collide frequently with each other and with the wall of the container. So now, when gas move, they collide with each other. They also collide with the wall of the container. So now, what is the consequence? We can define two types of collision here. One will be the elastic collision. When a, a collision is elastic, we say the momentum before collision is the same as the momentum after collision. The collision can be inelastic. That means the momentum before collision is not the same as the momentum after collision. But now, let's look at that third point. During their motion, they they collide frequently with each other, each other, and with the wall of the container. So the collision are perfectly elastic. Because they say it's assumed to be elastic, it means momentum before collision is the same as momentum after collision. So now, the kinetic energy of the molecule before and after collision is the same. The kinetic energy of the molecule before and after collision, they are the same. That is that energy may be transferred from one molecule to another during collision, but there is no, no net decrease in kinetic energy. That's the kinetic energy is conserved. And that's why one of the reasons we see momentum before collision, maybe you have a, a the mass of the gas molecule is M and it's moving. So when it is moving, the momentum that is to mass times velocity, that is mv. So after collision, the gas will return. That means what, what we say that the momentum before collision is the same as when in direction, we now have minus m. Now is given as momentum after collision. The change in momentum is defined. 
minus momentum after collision. That's what we call the change in momentum. And that is momentum before collision is MV, minus minus MV. That means the change in momentum is two mass of the gas, two by the velocity in which it is moving. So you can look at it, that's the third law. The third law talks about collision and we see that the collision is elastic. The collision is elastic. And because the collision is elastic, the momentum before collision uh, is equal to... Yeah. Yes. Hello, sir. Yeah. Yes, I I'm hearing you. Get, I want to get this. Are you saying that when they are operating in the normal atmospheric condition, that's when they are changing momentum constant? After yeah, collision yeah. and before collision. In the, in the before same collision, atmospheric that is, condition. Yeah, that's what we that's what we are talking about. Uh, we normally condition standard temperature and pressure, and we now talk about two types of gas. Later, you shall see that and identify okay. two types of gases: ideal and non-ideal okay. gas. And the gas law okay. is specifically applicable to ideal gas. Okay. It's, but we are using some models. To, to create what we, we imagine then and then compare to the real thing. ID gas. We shall see later that non-ID gas do not obey all the gas law. And it deviates from the gas model. So but the model we use here is that then we now amend the model. When we amend the model, we are amending the model to make sure that it now match what it's okay. okay. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. So if the velocity of a colliding gas molecule of mass, 0 0.001 kilogram, calculate the momentum before collision, the momentum after collision, calculate the total change in momentum. The time taken is 0 0.01. We look at momentum before collision is MV, which is what? Mass times velocity. We obtain that 0 0.01. A second. So now we now have a mass after after collision the momentum 002 kilogram per meters per second. Then total change in momentum will be momentum before collision minus momentum after or kilogram meters per second. So the rate of change of momentum will be the change. And the time was given by 0 0.001 second. And therefore, the rate of change of momentum is now 0 0.1 meter. So now, <clears throat> what do you mean uh, by the rate of change of momentum? Gram meters, the rate of change, total change in momentum, sorry. The total change in momentum should also have the same unit as meters per second. So the rate of change of momentum will be meters, kilogram meters. <coughs> okay, now let's see. No, it will be canceled. It's kilogram meter. So now, when you look at the rate of change of momentum, exerted will be is equal to the rate of change of momentum. When you look at Newton law, it tells you that force is the same as the rate of change of momentum. So what we have calculated here also. Them. So the rate of change of momentum so of the body. Yes, so you want to ask a, a question? Sorry, sir. Can you can you uh, review revise? Yeah, I think which get of them? Uh, Do you want to <coughs> Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I think uh, this. Uh, I think this uh, solution. We are this, we are talking based on a gas operating in a vacuum. Yeah, it's got in all the yeah, all the matters as in their grams, their their weight, they are operating in the same frequency. Yeah, so yeah. It, I think it has to be yeah, it has to be gram meters per second. Because uh, yeah, because they are no. weighing almost the same. All the gases are operating on the same frequency, so they are of the same size because of their change of momentum and in collision and after collision. That's 
Hello. No, and what happened if you are subtracting two grams, right? Yes. Do you understand me? Yes, yes. Hello. I'm here. Yeah. So when you are subtracting a number, a unit does not change. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, so that is why we have that. So, but okay, for the yeah, person, rather, 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 it will it will increase. It won't change. So, Isa, can you go back some more? I didn't get these calculations at all. Ask me a question. So, so the body was given to you. So, yeah, you say what is is it the calculation that you want to know? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, but you know what is momentum. You can't, yeah. you can't get the calculation here without pulling the question. Okay, uh, okay. Do you know what is momentum? I, I no, uh, no, 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 sir. Okay, momentum is defined as four uh, mass times what velocity, oh, velocity. right? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, so velocity. Now look at the question very well. If the velocity of a colliding gas molecule of mass, the mass is what here? Zero point zero zero one kilogram is now two meters per second. The velocity is what? Two meters per second. Yes. So calculate the momentum before collision. The momentum before collision will be mass times velocity, which is what? 0 0.001 times two. Can you get that one? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm talking I to try. the madam. Yes, I want her to understand. Try. No, not try. Multiply the result and see what is the mass. Look at the equation. What is the mass and what is the velocity? The unit of mass is kilogram. The unit of velocity is two meters per, uh, meters per second. And it's given as two. So when you multiply, you now have what you call momentum before collision. And now the momentum after collision will be the same value, but it will now be negative. Minus, the, since the other one was 0 0.002, this one will be minus 0 0.002. So now, total change in momentum will be momentum before collision minus momentum after collision, which is 0 0.001 okay. minus minus, or 0 0.002 minus minus 0 0.002. So that is why you have 0 0.004. So now, okay. 0 0.004. So now, what you call the rate of change on momentum will be the momentum, total change in momentum divided by the time. The time was given as 2. 0 0.001 seconds. Second. So you, you divide that by time and you have gotten that. Now, I now bring you to Newton law. Newton law state that the rate of change of momentum is equal to what? The applied force. That's what Newton law states. So now, the rate of change of momentum of a body is proportional to the applied force. The rate of change of momentum is given as 2 times mv all over t. 2 mv, which is the denominator, denominator or numerator is now the change of in momentum, the total change in momentum divided by what? Time. So the rate of change of momentum is equal to apply force. That means apply force will be two times mass times velocity all over time. So that's what it apply force will mean. Now let's yeah. take a, 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 a kinetic theory of gases. At relatively low pressure, there are no uh, intermolecular. Hello, sir. Yes. Hello, sir. I think for yes, that sir, equation, that, that is the, the formula for calculating uh, change of momentum. Yes. Change of, uh, that is mm. the formula. I just wanted them to understand that is the formula for that, uh, that law. Okay. Yeah. Is that so okay? That is the calculation I want to Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now, kinetic theory of gases. At relatively low pressure, there are no intermolecular forces between the molecules. So the theory is assuming that's the fourth, the fourth postulate. When the pressure is low, the forces of attraction and repulsion between gas molecules is actually not really there. That's what the theory postulates. But in real sense, that we will always have uh, forces of attraction and repulsion. So, the fourth law says that at relatively low pressure, there are no intermolecular forces between the molecules. And the fifth law says that the, the fifth possible state that the collision of gas molecule with a container give rise to the pressure. So what we mean by gas pressure is that gas is moving, colliding with the container with each other. That's why there will be pressure. 
So that is what gas pressure means. So the pressure exerted by gas is due to the force exerted on the wall of the container due to non-stop pollution or bombardment of the molecule. Because the molecules are constantly moving, they will collide with each other, they will collide with the wall of container, and that is what we mark as gas pressure. What we measure is, as gas pressure is the collision, the rate they collide. If they collide very high, it means the pressure will be higher. Look at your car tire. When you drive your car tire, they will go and gauge your, say this pressure is 40, 40, 40 PSI. So it, it's telling you that that is a collision between the air molecule. Air is a gas there. Now, if you increase your temperature, if the tire is hot, the pressure will be higher. So, so we will see all this later on. So we have highlighted five theories and five postulates, and the last one here is the sixth postulate. The absolute temperature of a gas is proportional to the mean kinetic energy of the gas molecule. Now you see one gas molecule A move, and the kinetic energy is 0 0.2, and the next one move, and the kinetic energy is 0 0.3. So if we have two gases, for instance, two gas molecules, the mean kinetic energy will be 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3 divided by what? By two, so the total number. So the, the, when, when we get that the absolute temperature of a gas is proportional to the mean kinetic energy of a gas molecule. Take note, when we come to kinetic energy of a gas molecule, what factors that reflect that is temperature. When we come to the pressure of gas molecule, what factors that reflect that is the collision with the wall of the container. When we are considering collision with the wall of the container, we are looking at gas pressure. And when we are considering the average kinetic energy at which the gas molecule moves, we are considering temperature. Take note of that. And we look at gas molecule move uh, very consists of tiny particles called molecules. We see gas molecules are constantly in motion, colliding with each other and with the wall of the container. And we say that the collision of the gas molecule is perfectly elastic. That means momentum before collision is equal to momentum after collision. But for any collision that is not elastic, momentum before collision and after collision are not the same. So that is what we can see from the postulate. We have highlighted the postulate. So the question, state the kinetic theory of gas that account for the following temperature of a gas. The average kinetic energy of a, a gas molecule is measure of the temperature, elastic collision. And a, when you call about elastic collision, it's because it's the, uh, the intermolecular force between gas molecules are neglected because they are very, it's not very insignificant. That's why we can say that the collision is elastic. Pressure exacted by gas molecule, the collision of a gas molecule with each other and with the wall of the container is a measure of its pressure. So these three parameters about elastic collision, temperature, and pressure, you should know the postulate that applies to them. So now let's look at derivation of uh, the gas ball. I pray that time will be able to take us there because I have another class exactly six o'clock. So consider a gas moving in a, a cubical container of size L. If you have a cube like sugar, all the sides are equal. If one molecule of a gas move from one end to another, the distance cover is what? L. If it move from one side to another because all the sides are equal and each side is equal to L, now, if that molecule now return, the distance cover will be what? 2L, so L plus L, 2L. The time between collision is given as, when you look at time, the meaning of velocity, velocity is equal to distance over time. So if you want to make time the subject of the formula, time will be equal to distance divided yeah, by velocity. velocity. So we have that. So the momentum before collision is now MV, we said mass times the velocity. The momentum after collision is what? Minus mass times velocity. The total change in momentum is what? Mass times velocity minus minus mass times velocity, which is what? Two times mass times velocity. So that is one factor we have now said there. So now, from Newton law, the, the rate of change of momentum is equal to what? Apply force. So now we can say that force is equal to change in momentum all over time. When we talk about the rate of change of momentum, we are looking at change in momentum divided by time. So now you can recall the time, the, the fraction we defined about time. We were defined velocity as time. That means time will be equal to 
time will be called the word velocity divided by by this uh sorry we define velocity as equal to distance over time that means time is equal to distance over velocity so when we take change in momentum which is 2m mass time velocity divided by what the time that means the distance over over velocity we will have this and if we simplify it we will have m over the distance times velocity squared all over one if there are n number of molecules then the above equation is multiplied by n n is the number of molecules we multiply here then we have a force we now see that the force will be equal to the mass divided the mass small mass multiplied by the number of molecules, which is the Avogadro's number. Number of molecules can simply be seen as when you multiply the number of molecules by, by the mass of a particle, you have the, what you call molar mass. Number Molar mass is defined as number of molecules multiplied by, by the mass. So you can see N, number of molecules times the mass of the gas gives you capital M. Capital M is what we call molar mass. So we now see that the force is equal to the, the molar mass divided by the volume times velocity squared. How do we get the volume? Because when we are looking at the cube and we are looking at the length of the three sides, when you multiply L by, by L squared, you have the volume. We are coming to that. So now, pressure will be defined as force over area. So if we take that expression for the force and divide by the area, it will be equal to pressure. And that pressure is now simplified to M over L times G squared all over one times one over L squared. So that is what we have as gas pressure. We can replace the velocity with the average velocity in the X direction. That means gas molecule will move in X direction, some will move in Y direction, some will move in Z direction. So now when you look at that, we can replace that. In, and we, instead of having V, one V, we now look at average velocity, which is V is x squared in x direction, where P is the density of the gas. P is equal to that's rho is the density of the gas. The rho the rho is the mass over velocity. So that mass divided by or volume of the gas will give you the rho. So I will actually download this video to you. I'm trying. Sorry that I may have to increase my speed a little. So where rho is the density of the gas, V is equal to m over v. So v is the velocity of the gas. However, there are three possible direction of Pollution and one is in the x direction. Some gas molecule move direction and some will move to the z direction. And each direction have separate molecules moving there. So at the end of it, what we expect because of this difference in direction, what we expect is uh, what we expect is uh, v. That's the total the vx, vx one, vx two, and vx three. And that means Vx in the x direction alone, we will have different gas molecules moving together. So in the y direction, we have different gas molecules moving together. In the z direction, we have different gas molecules moving together. Therefore, we take the average value for each and term the average value, the mean speed. The mean speed is the average value of the velocity of the gas in the three basic directions the x direction, the y direction, and the z direction. Sorry, this one should be vz. So we take that, that is what we call the mean speed, the average speed in the various direction. And this can be written as uh, we, we have sitting here, mean speed vx squared plus vy squared and plus vz squared. So however, vx squared can be equal to vy squared, can be equal to vz squared, that means we, if they are equal, you have Vx squared. This one will be Vx squared plus Vx squared plus Vx squared. That will give us three Vx squared. And that is what we have here. So the mean speed can be seen as a three Vx squared. If the container has the same dimension and the three gases are moving in the same dimension. What is most important is for you to know the for, uh, formula for the pressure of a gas. But it just feel that I, I should derive it from you. Once you know the formula for pressure of the gas, at this level, nobody has it to derive. But those that will be doing chemistry, when you come up, you see us better. So now, the, the average speed now is one over three mu squared because the mean speed is one over three Vx squared. So substitution for Vx squared gives you one over three mu squared to the equation. And we have the pressure will be equal to one over three Nm 
all over V multiplied by mu square. So PV, if we now take P times this, we have one over three M mu square. So this is a formula you should know. That's what I put in the red map. Anything you will be expected this time is to calculate based on that formula. So now, derive expression for a pressure. Please, go back. Let me screenshot it, sir. No, you will get it uh, from your get from the course page. But let okay. me. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So this uh, question. I think that's proceed, almost, sir. Proceed, you're sir. Almost, you're almost, yeah, you're almost taking us. Take it there. Is, is that what you mean? Okay. So is that? So I'll continue. So this equation is directly what we have done. It's telling you what we have done. So this question will help you to handle that to very well. Nice. Almost in that equation. So calculate the change in momentum is simply some, some of the problems that we have done. So apply the Newton law is simply the problem we have done. The different step involves that we have taken. I have simplified it in this uh, presentation. So ideal gas obey all the gas law. Why non-ideal gas? Non-ideal gases do not obey all non-ideal gas. Ideal gas do not obey the gas law. So that's the difference between what's the difference between ideal gas and what is the difference between ideal and non ideal gases. So the major thing there is uh, the non-ideal, non-ideal gases obey equation of states, such as, such as the band that were equation. Equation of state modify the real gas equation to, let me put it there, equation of state. Modify. Ideal gas equation to interpret the behavior of real gases. To interpret the behavior of real gases. So now, explore the relationship between pressure and forces. So that's another step you need to do. I'm just pushing the step. What I have done in derivation, I'm trying to put them in a tablet form so that you can now look at them differently. So ideal gas, we now see N is a Foucault's number, is still the step we have taken so far. Then you can calculate the mean speed of 0 0.001 kilogram of a gas at 298 Kelvin. Calculate the mean speed of 0 0.001 kilogram of a gas at 298 Kelvin. That's a question. So all what you need to know is to know the relationship between the mean speed and temperature. So you can now know that. So now this is still part of the derivation. I'll be happy to interact with anybody that has a challenge. So, so you can see how many moles are present in 0 0.0032 kilogram of a substance whose molar mass is this. So you can see the number of moles present. Avocado's number is the number of molecules in one mole of a substance. So, and that is equal to that. So I did gas equation and kinetic theory, PV is equal to R, N, R, T. N is the number of moles, R is a gas constant. So these are the equation, different equations we have actually derived. And you can see the last equation tells you the relationship between the, uh, the mean speed and the temperature. Temperature is T here, and N is a Fugardus number, M is the mass of the gas. So that one we say calculate the mean speed of that gas. This is the one. Calculate the average translational kinetic energy of nitrogen gas at 300 Kelvin, it's equal to this. The solution is given that, so the translational energy is two over three K times T. K 
K is what you call the Boltzmann's uh, constant. The volume of Boltzmann constant is 1.3 times 10 raised to the power minus 34 meters square kilogram per second square. So the calculation is actually done there. So these are some few calculations you can do. The derivation is not very important, but those who are strong in math, you can join me to carry out the derivation. Can I take a few questions before I leave? Very few, please. Sorry, yes, sir. sir. Uh, yeah, you you will get this slide. Somebody, uh, let me read, read the test. You get this slide. Get it from this first page. You also have the video. You have access to the video. You okay. have access to the video on this. Uh, everything we have done will be uploaded in the first page. Yeah, you can ask your questions, please. Very few. So I want to ask you about these uh, equations. Like, uh, if they give like this moment, you will see in uh, Cosmate, you will see many equations. I don't know which one I will take. No, it depends on what you ask. Like, for instance, let me give you the one. Let me take you to one. The last one I've asked. Uh, let me take you to one. Let me see. Okay, calculate the mean speed of 0 0.001 kilogram of a gas at 298. So which one do you use there? There are many equations there. We try to break it down here in the lecturing services. So you can see this equation. The last one can be enough for you. The last one can save that purpose. So it depends on the equation that it has. That's why it's good to practice some questions and also get yourself familiar. Any other question, please? I want to switch to another lecture. So any other question, if there's a question, ask. And I think I will try to create uh, some few minutes interactive sessions within weeks. Maybe from next week, I'll try and create time that you can interact. When you, when you read your course materials, if you have problem, we can interact. Hello, sir. Any other question? Any other question? Yes, sir. Ask now. Sir, um, you were talking about this Boltzmann constant please what is it uh boltzmann constant is a constant derived by boltzmann it has a volume value of 1.38 times 10 raised to the power of minus 34 so that's the value of the boltzmann constant okay when when is it applicable please uh, whenever you have a calculation to do and it involves the boltzmann constant that's when it is applicable oh, oh okay thank you thank you very much have a nice time till next weekend have a nice time. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes.